This module is titled Development of Reach and Grasp. Prior to completing this module, please complete the readings outlined in the course schedule. They are also listed here. Upon completion of this module, you should understand the factors that influence the development of reach and grasp and identify milestones in reach and grasp development. So is reaching innate or learned? This gets at some of the questions and ideas that we explored in the lecture on developmental theories. Is development driven by nature or nurture? Early hypotheses on reaching, based on neural maturationist theory, suggested that primitive reflexes were the basis for complex reaching movements, and that once higher nervous system sensory and motor pathways for visually guided reaching matured, that reaching emerged. Cognitive theory would dictate that learning and experience are required for the infant to create a visual map and perceptual rules for reaching. However, consistent with the dynamical systems view of development, current research suggests that a combination of these things may be true. The ability to locate an object in space and transport the arm appear to be present in rudimentary form at birth. Babies gene are genetically pre-programmed for just gross, basic reaching movements. However, more mature aspects of reaching, such as grasp, are developed and refined over time with experience. In keeping with the system's view of development, we describe reaching as being promoted or constrained by both intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Intrinsic factors include the infant's age and experience, visual development, and their postural control. External, uh, extrinsic factors may include body position, support, and seating configuration. All environmental factors, as well as properties of the task and the object itself. Visual development plays a role in the development of early reaching. In the newborn period, the baby has some limited ability to track and visually fixate upon objects. Infants who are newborn have very limited vision, but they are able to see some objects within 8 to 12 inches of their, of their face. Younger infants use vision to elicit reaching and may also rely on vision to provide feedback for grasping once they contact the object. As the infant and the child mature, they become less reliant on vision for reaching movements. Age and experience also influence reaching. Remember that experience is frequently related to age, but that's not always true. Not surprisingly, infants with more experience reaching who have been given more opportunities to reach for objects have reaching, better reaching abilities than infants of the same age who have not had as much experience. So again, environmental opportunities and practice are important for the development of motor skills. Postural control is also an important intrinsic factor that influences the development of reaching. Poor postural control can sometimes mask distal abilities such as re reaching. Research shows that babies must be able to demonstrate organized muscle activation patterns in a cephalocaudal direction in preparation for reaching. If babies are unable to activate these postural muscles and cannot provide a stable base of support, reaching will not occur despite the child's arm and hand function. This is why that as postural control improves between the ages of three to six months, we also see reaching emerge and improve as well. In extrinsic and environmental factors also play a critical role in development of reaching. Body position and support can have an impact on reaching, particularly in infants who are less than six months of age, who don't have well-developed postural control yet. Younger infants show a decrease in both the quality and quantity of reaching movements when they are in a supine position compared to a semi-reclined or upright position. It is likely that it is more difficult for these young infants to gain sufficient postural control to lift their arm directly against gravity in that supine position. Being semi-reclined or upright provides them with a little bit of support and also lessens the forces of gravity against which they need to reach. However, 
body position and support seem to have little effect on reaching by age six months once infants have gained anti-gravity postural control in almost all positions. Object properties may also have an influence on reaching development. The size and shape of an object, whether the object is moving or stationary, and whether the object is fully visible to the infant or vision is blocked all influence reaching patterns in infants. Over the next several slides, we will explore how reaching and grasping typically develops throughout the first year of life and throughout childhood. Reaching development is also described in your Campbell text in Chapter 3, Table 3-4. As I describe some of the reaching skills typical for each age range, um, I'll also be showing videos from the YouTube playlist that's linked here. Um, I'll also post a link to that playlist for you so that you can go back and review these videos of infant reaching at various stages of development. Newborns are able to track a moving object using saccadic eye movements. The newborn will move his arm with an open hand when visually fixated on an object. When an object is placed in the hand of a newborn, the newborn will grasp the object. However, at this stage, grasp is reflexive. Get it! Get it! Here we see an example of a one-month-old infant who is trying to visually fixate on the object and is moving the arm. You can notice that the arm movements um, are very random, that the hand is fisted, and that the elbow is, is really quite locked. By two months, as the ability to visually attend to an object matures, Frequency of reaching actually decreases. The hand is primarily fisted. Head and arm movements are strongly coupled. Um, this is often related to the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. The reflex is still very strong at this age, and so when the infant turns his head to one side, the arm on the side to which the head is turned extends while the opposite arm flexes. And the baby really has trouble breaking out of this these coupled at heart, head arm movements at this age. By three months, the infant can track objects well. He has gained good head control and now has good eye-head coordination. Frequency of reaching increases, the hand is open, and infants become more realistic in their reaching by this age. By age three months, reaching is now visually triggered. And here we see a baby who is 12 weeks old. You can see the nice visual fixation on the object. The arm is still locked, the hand is open, and the arm movement is much more controlled at this age. And you see the baby gets a couple of successful reaching attempts. By four months, infants have gained trunk control, providing a stable base for emerging reaching. Infants are able to contact a moving object about 90% of trials by age four to five months, and they transition from simply touching the object, as we saw in the previous video, to starting to catch the object by the fifth month. At this age, symmetrical bimanual reaching tends to dominate. The um, reflexive palmer grasp is now beginning to integrate and voluntary palmer grasp emerges at this age. The elbow continues to be locked and the reach is very choppy, occurring in several steps, with the final approach to the object being very crooked and awkward. At this age, reaching is still very inefficient. 
infants continue to use their vision and reaching at this age is visually guided. And here we see a baby who is about in that four to five month range. You can really see here how he's starting to um, bend his elbow just a little bit in the reach. So the elbow is still largely locked, but there's a little bit of movement. Um, there's some individual finger movements there. He is uh, very realistic in the reaching and is even starting to, even starting to grasp a little bit. By six months, reaching becomes much smoother with a straighter path, and um, unilateral reaching is going to begin to dominate at this age. The elbow is no longer locked, and elbow movements may now be part of the reaching movement. And the infants continue to use visual information, but at this point, visual information is used more to adjust the grip configuration. And we see that a more radial palmer grasp begins to emerge at this stage. So infants sort of start to transition from just a gross palmer grasp to a little bit more of a, a, a palmer grasp along the radial side of their hand. So that's a development in their grasping at this age. By age nine months, the infant has mastered coordinated and complementary by manual reaching. This means he can now transfer objects from hand to hand. And in addition to having voluntary grasp, the baby now has controlled release. Before this age, once the baby has grasped, they may have difficulty letting go of the object. But by nine months, we usually see the baby is now able to have a voluntary release of the object. Grasping has developed, and now the baby's opening of the hand during reaching is related to the size of the object. So they're using that visual information that they're getting from the object to figure out about how how open their hand needs to be to grasp it. The baby is now beginning to develop beyond a palmer grasp and we see a pincer grasp emerge. And this is a grasp where um, the thumb and the forefinger come together to pinch and pick up very small objects. So pincer grasp doesn't dominate at this age, but we begin to see it. So this is an age where you can begin to start um, giving a baby, you know, Cheerios perhaps on their, on their high chair tray, and they may begin to start to have strategies to actually be able to pick up those, those Cheerios. And we see that here in this baby. So we notice that she's attempting here to um, get that pincer grasp, but she just doesn't quite have it. And so what we see here is more of what we see when palm pincer grasp is beginning to emerge. That's more of a raking type of grasp where the baby sort of uses um, all of her fingers to try to kind of bring that object into the in between the thumb and the and the forefinger. You can see that this baby is easily able to reach with either hand. Um, she can individually move her fingers. And she's pretty realistic in her reaching at this point. And here we see another uh, video of a baby who's reaching and stacking blocks. He's about 11 months old. So you can see he's able to grasp the block with either hand, switch the block between hands. He can let go of the block and stack the block and is probably beginning to bang the blocks together. Reaching really changes very little after the age of nine months. And by the end of the first year, timing of reaching and grasping is actually very similar to adults. At this age, 
grasp is initiated earlier in the reach. So through learning and experience, the baby has now um, learned how to start to already begin the grasp before they really even begin the grasp. So they initiate those skills earlier in the reach. And at, by 12 months, pincer grasp is now very well developed. And we can see that here in this video. Similar to the video we saw before of the baby sitting in the high chair, but this baby's just a little bit older and she's working on that. And you can really see how she was able to get that um, little piece of cereal right between that, those fingers. And she was able to do it pretty quickly and easily. We'll watch that again. And there she grabs it with that nice pincer grasp. Reaching changes little until about age seven. At that age, children begin to further refine their reaching by changing how they use information, sensory information, to guide and adjust their arm position during reaching and improve reaching efficiency. Research shows that the child's ability to understand and use sensory information for reach correction continues through at least age 11. Get it, get it, get it. Can you get that zebra? Shut those off. Grasp should develop into a tripod grasp, such as a pencil grip by school age. This final slide illustrates the progression of grasping from infancy through school age. The top photo shows the progression from an early Palmer grasp, what we see at three or four months, through a pincer grasp seen at approximately age 12 months. And you can notice sort of that transition from a palmer grasp to a more radial palmer grasp to um, a more mature radial grasp to then that pincer grasp. Finally, that would occur at about 12 months. The bottom picture then picks up at about age one year and shows how a baby may grasp a crayon or pencil um, for, for coloring or drawing or writing. You will note that when holding the crayon or pencil that the palmer grasp is typical in the toddler. It's called a cylindrical grasp here. Development occurs to a more uh, digital grasp at age two to three years, a modified tripod grasp by age three and a half to four years, and then finally by early school age, the child gains the fine motor skills to achieve a tripod grasp which provides the control needed for tasks such as handwriting. This concludes our lecture on motor development or on reaching and grasping. Um, once again, I'll leave you with a video of a laughing baby. <laughs>